Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of escorted group travel. So escorted group travel. This is where you go on holiday with an external company who has arranged everything for you. Your flights, your internal transfers, your hotels, and you will have a manager escorting you on your tour. And they'll look after everything for you. I mean, they are fabulous. That is what we're talking about today and the do's and don'ts. So number one, do check the itinerary carefully make sure the itinerary fits what you want to see when you're thinking about going to a country there will be certain things that you have on your bucket list that you want to see if you're looking at a tour and it's not on there look at another company see what their itinerary is. It is so worth comparing them because they're not all identical. They will be similar, but they're not all the same. For example, I recently went to Turkey on a tour and one of the ladies there was desperate to go to Hattusha. I didn't even notice it on the itinerary because it wasn't something that I was particularly like desperate to see but she was and it was the only company that included her two show so it is definitely worth checking every single company make sure you're doing what you want to do number two do not assume that the company you are booking with will also arrange your visa visas you usually need to be sorted out by yourself. So check this and make sure you get the right visa in time for when the tour starts. Now so, some companies will help you and arrange it for you. So just you do this for you. They have an external company that will sort your visas for you. But they need time to do that and you still need to provide all the information and pay for it separately. Don't forget your visas. Number three, to check the additional information provided by the tour company very carefully. That information should include things like how tough the tour is going to be and the level of fitness needed. If you're not particularly active, you do not want to be going on a tour where they require a fitness level at the highest level because you won't keep up. Likewise, if you're very active, you don't want to pick a tour that's very slow moving. Make sure you check this. Also check any special condition. For instance, going to South America, there should be information in there about high altitudes and altitude sickness. There should be guidance in there to tell you if you need to go see your doctor for anything specific. Don't miss that important information. Make sure you read through it very carefully. Make sure you understand it all carefully and just read it. You'll be surprised how many times people haven't read it and then you turn up there and they've got these questions and they're like, why didn't you read it? Number four, check what's included. The, the itinerary will state which meals are included and if they're not stated, they're not. So you usually always get your breakfast, but you may have to buy your lunches and dinners. Make sure you know what you need to take as your budget for that. Also check if there's any additional costs for additional excursions. So there may be optional excursions like uh, night shows or 
are on afternoons off a half day trip somewhere check them and see if you need to pay extra for them and whether you need to book it in advance or you can book it while you're on your tour don't miss out on something you might want to do number five is this tour the right age group for you now you might not mind what age you're traveling with but you may also mind if you're my age and you don't want to accidentally book a backpacking, hostel staying, tent sharing, 18 to 20 holiday by mistake. Just make sure you check what the age range is and, and also whether it's for couples or solo people. Because there are a lot of solo trips now and it doesn't mean that you can't you know, go on both, whether you're a couple or solo, but do check that. Make sure you're on the one that's most appropriate for you and what's going to make you the most comfortable. Number six, do they organise a car to the airport for you or parking at the airport? This has become a big thing in the last few years, so I think Titan holidays have always done the chauffeur driving from your home to the airport but now more and more companies are doing that it does make life a lot easier especially on the way back because you're tired and you know they pick you up right outside the airport you don't need to go find your car if that's an option do look into that and make sure you know whether it's included it's going to be an extra cost or you need to get your own arrangements made okay that's my do's and don'ts for before you book and while you're booking now for the do's and don'ts when you're on your group tour so the first one when you're on your tour and you arrive at the airport is do not panic do not wonder where everybody is you will be given instructions where to meet your tour manager tour guide and the rest of your group just follow the instructions and you will be fine. Trust me, they will not leave the airport without you. Number two, and this is a big one, don't be late. You've got other people that you're traveling with and you've all had to get up early and get on the bus at a particular time. Don't be the one person that is late and holds everybody up and throws the schedule out for the rest of the day. You might get away with it once, but if you do it two or three times, you are not going to be popular. Be courteous to your fellow travelers. Get everywhere on time. Do not be late. Now emergencies may happen, and that's fine, but because you overslept, or you got held up in a shop or something, it's not going to fly for long with your fellow travellers. No. And number three, in the same vein, be nice to your fellow travellers, even if you're tired and grumpy, you know, and we all get that, we've all got a bit jet lag, we all feel a bit down, it's fine, just tell them, I'm feeling tired and grumpy today, but it's not personal, everybody understands. Be courteous to them, help each other, because you don't know that there may be something that happens during that tour where you need someone to help you. And it does make the whole experience so much better if you just enjoy it and enjoy the company that you're with. Don't be that sad puss at the back of the bus, no. Number four, if you have a problem at all, Raise it with your tour manager. Whether you've lost something or you're, there's something wrong with your hotel room, you're not feeling well, whatever it is, raise it with your tour manager. That is what they're there for and they will help you resolve it. They are there to make sure that you have the time of your life and if you've got any concerns or any worries, they want to help you resolve it. And I cannot think of a time when my tour manager has not been the best person to sort things out. Just make sure you tell them. Number five, and this is a little bit like don't be late, 
don't want her off. There's a couple of reasons for this. If you're told to meet somewhere at a specific time, at a specific place, make sure you know where that is before you go and do your own exploration. Don't disappear because when no one's going to get left behind but people then have to take time out of the schedule to come and find you and it holds the rest of the day up again. But also, it's a safety thing. The tour managers and the tour guides want to know that you are okay and safe. If you're not where they think you're supposed to be, they're going to be worried. So don't wander off. And if you are going to wander off, tell someone where you've gone. Safety. Number six, don't try and undermine your tour manager or the tour guide. It's sad to say this, but sometimes you do get that know-it-all on the tour who wants to correct everything that the tour managers and the tour guides tell you. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's a really hard job for these tour managers and tour guides. Not only are they trying to give you the best experience and show you the best sites that they can in the most entertaining way that they can. They're also having to manage the, you know, where you're going, the next hotel, every single bit of the itinerary. It's a hard job and they have to keep smiling. They may not want to always smile. So give them a break and don't undermine them. It also doesn't make you popular with your fellow travellers. It's just not done. It's also not polite or done to shout at your tour manager. Now, I have been on a tour where someone, well, they went hell for leather at the tour manager. The thing was, the, the incident that she was complaining about was right, but the way she did it was completely wrong. And it ended up isolating her from the rest of the group because it's just not done. It's just so rude and really disrespectful. Don't shout or undermine your tour manager or tour guides. The next one, and I've lost Kel, um, so sorry, um, is don't feel you have to do every activity that's scheduled. Now, obviously, if you're leaving one location and the activity is en route to the next location where your hotel is, you won't really have a lot of choice. But if you're in the same hotel, in the same location for a couple of nights, and you don't actually want to go and see that particular site, you want to do something different, you want to go and chill on your own for a bit, it's okay to do that. Just tell your tour manager, I'm not going to do this trip this afternoon or this morning. Um, I'm just going to stay in the hotel and do this, or I actually want to take myself off and do this. It's not a problem. Just make sure you tell them that you're not going to come down so they're not waiting for you, and what you are planning to do so that they know that you are safe, and if anything happens to you, they can come looking for you common sense. But don't feel that you have to do absolutely everything on that itinerary. We all need some downtime to ourselves sometimes. The next one is only take the luggage that you're allowed to take. So these tools will include porterage, usually for one case up to 20 kilograms. Don't take two cases with you. It's not fair on the poor people carrying your bags around. So stick to the rules. <laughs> Only take the luggage that's been allowed and allocated to you. Now, I'm actually laughing because um, I've actually taken two on one trip once um, when I went to India um, because I filled the other case up with supplies for the Mother Teresa place. Um, so, you know, after I donated it all, I did fold it up and put it away, and I did feel quite bad. So I did tip my luggage guy a bit more, but it was very naughty, naughty, and you really shouldn't do it. 
And the final one is do tip your tour manager, your tour guides and the drivers. Don't get to the end of your holiday and think, ooh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Yes, you are. And it's usually about $10 a day for your tour manager and $5 a day for the tour guides and a couple of dollars for the driver. So make sure you budget that and make sure you pay them. Now, especially the tour guides, in some of these countries, this is, the tips are the main earner for them. So bear that in mind and take enough with you, budget in, it into your travels and pay your tips fairly. Let's all be nice now. So there you have it. There might do some don'ts for escorting group tours. I hope they were useful and um, if I've missed any out, please do tell me in my comments. Until next time, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.